Mitsubishi Eclipse VRX delivery. Right, starting at the back, what we have is an electronic switch for a door handle. Okay, so you lift and pull at the same time and it will go up nice and smooth. Sometimes people unhook it and it catches a little bit so it's just one smooth simple movement in the back here obviously we have our spear wheel underneath the little cargo cover here jack and wheel brace space saver wheel so 80 kilometers an hour max nice and slow on the corners in the back here it's easier to see the seat release from the back but you activate it through the back door okay Headrests obviously go up and down, and the cargo barrier pulls through. Just a little catch here. Not all of them will have cargo barriers, but most of them will. So, back, little light, um, and handle to keep our hand nice and dry on wet days. To the back door. Nothing exciting here. Kitty locks. Boom, same as normal. Now, the back seat in these is a little different. You can angle it, unlike the ASX. And the whole seat does move forward and back with the release of a handle on the front here. So you can actually shift it right up against the front seats if you need to. Uh, little armrest in the back with cup holders in it. And obviously sunroof in the back here as well, which does have a cover if you need it. Keyless entry vehicle. So once we have the keys in our pocket, we can lock the vehicle. And unlock the vehicle just by the touch of a button on the door handle. The keys themselves have a spear key, which if you slide the little lever across, you can pull out the key. The seat has electronic control, so the one here controls you forward and back of the back half of the seat. The lever itself controls forward and back of the seat, the large lever. This controls the back height. This controls the individual front height. Okay. Up here, we have seat belt release. So we can adjust the height of the seat belts up and down as needed. Okay, so it clips. First things first, uh, we'll start down here. So, from the right we have our accident mitigation system adjustment so we can adjust it three levels of adjustment um, from far which is standard medium and close you would only adjust this if in far you find that it reactivates quite a bit um, from following too close getting too close to vehicles you can close it up a little bit lane departure warning you can turn this off at any time and it will stay off unlike the accent mitigation system um, and all this does is when you start to drift over the lines on the road it will warn you that's an idea if you're uh, falling asleep or whatever it'll go off stability control no need to turn this off but it does stop the vehicle going into a slide etc um, and it's also your traction control system as well so if you accelerate too hard it won't spin the wheels over here we have our HUD control uh, which you'll see shortly but it's height adjustment on and off and how bright it is okay Different people, different heights will need different height on the adjustment. Uh, parking so no, we can turn that off if required. Uh, if you've got a tow bar, tow ball, etc., we can uh, turn it off. So if we've got a trailer on. Down here, we have our bonnet release and we have our fuel flap release in the usual spot next to the pillar. Everything down here is the same as normal. Okay, up here we have cruise control. And that's the same as normal. To set it, we push down, and once it's set, it will sit at the speed that you currently set it at. To speed up, once you're on cruise or down, it's as easy as up and down. Okay. If you hit the brake or hit cancel to cancel the cruise control, it will still be sitting in its memory. If you go up, it will go resume, and it will go back to the speed you had already set it at. The button on the bottom controls the distance it will follow at on the adaptive cruise control so if you're doing 100 kilometers an hour but the car in front of you is doing 80 kilometers an hour it will slow down accordingly and this button allows you to adjust the distance that it will actually slow down at behind another vehicle separate to the cruise control is speed limiter so if you set speed limiter you can set it at for example 50 k's and it will let you do no more than 50 kilometers an hour as you set it the resume and speed controls are the same 
for using the button up here. So if you set it and you accidentally set it at 48, but you want to set it at 50, you just tap it up twice and it will give you 50 kilometers an hour or just hold it until you get to the speed desired. Okay, and the same as cruise control, as soon as you hit cancel or brake, it will kill the um, limiter. Behind here, we have paddle shifters, plus and minus. You'll notice that the plus has a on off on it. So if you cruise along and drive and you hit one of the paddles, either one doesn't matter, it will go into manual mode, you have eight gears. If you hold back the plus one, it will turn the um, Tiptronic off. So you will no longer be in manual, it will go back to drive. Quite a handy feature. As far as the lights go, auto is probably where you want to be most of the time. Uh, but otherwise you've got parkers, main beams, and on the end you have automatic high beam. So you can automatically high beam cars. Well, not high beam them as the case may be, it's very sensitive too, so it works very well. On the stalk we have our little spotlights, when the lights are on we can turn them on. So our indicators are soft touch, so we can just tap them up or down, and they will go three times. If we click and hold, they will go as per normal. On the left we have automatic window wipers, so we have mist, which is one click up. Okay, that will just give you a single wipe, if you pull back it will wash obviously. We have off and auto, so auto replaces intermittent instead of only going every now and then. They will only go when the sensor gets wet. And then we have our low and high modes. On the end we have our auto adjustment, how sensitive it is, and then our rear wiper of course, same as usual. On the left side of the steering wheel we have a camera button. Oops which looks like a coffee cup, don't get confused with this, uh, that will bring on our 360 cameras. So to start with, if you're not in reverse, it will bring out the front one and side ones, and yeah, you'll be able to see all around the vehicle. If you're in reverse, it will bring out the reversing camera as well. If you hit it again, it will give you a guide for the front left wheel so you don't get too close to the curb and scratch your lovely 18 inch wheels. Bluetooth, pick up, hang up, and a certain amount of voice control. Um, pretty straightforward in those. You'll notice that all the buttons are shaped so you won't accidentally hit the wrong one. Volume control for the stereo up and down and frequency left or right or mode flicking through your AM, FM, etc. So, other than that, that is your steering wheel. Now, to just bring up power, you hit the button once for just the stereo and that will eventually come up. Hit it twice to bring up all the power without turning on the car. Don't mind the beeps. Okay, so they will not generally um, stay on, obviously, if you're driving the car, but since I'm sitting in the showroom with the power off, then the, the lights will stay on for a second. Um, okay, so the audio. Here we have our Apple CarPlay system. And we have digital radio, which will come later. We have FM, we have Bluetooth, and we have our phone system. We can switch these around as needed. We just hold down and push it left or right to uh, get to the next screen. Uh, my gloves work excellent. Here we have USB, iPod, etc. So what you would do is customize the first screen so it's exactly as you would have it. And this is fairly well have it, how I would have it with the exception of I would switch the USB over there as well. Uh, we can also activate some vehicle settings. We can tell it when to turn on the, uh, how many times it flash the wipers, sorry, the indicators when we turn the car on and off and whether or not to fold the mirrors in. There's a bunch of other settings there as well. There's also settings for the stereo and uh, a bunch of other stuff. Day and night it should be on automatic so that it that dims down when the lights come on. We can turn off the screen altogether if required. Now the location is not a GPS, that is just a satellite location uh, and we can just have a lovely clock screen if we want it or AM. So pretty straightforward. To put in your phone, you'll go phone, you'll go peer device, you will go next and then you will locate it through your phone's Bluetooth system by scanning for the system. If it doesn't work the first time, turn the whole system off on your phone, turn it off on the car, and reactivate it. It will install. Okay, home will always get you back to the home screen. So on FM, you can go station, and it will show you all the currently available stations. You just click on the one you require.
So that is the stereo. Give you an idea of the 360 cameras. So that is currently showing out the front and all around the vehicle, obviously on the left. Here I have my left wheel so I can park nice and close to the curb. And then we're back to the stereo. And obviously if I go into reverse, it will bring up the reverse view. And the red line is roughly 10 to 15 centimeters off the bumper. The green line is roughly a meter at the end of the lines. Okay. Other than that, air conditioning. So we have dual climate air. We can just go to auto, which will bring up air for everybody. And it's set at 21 and a half degrees, which is generally about right. Um, but it will just heat or cool till it is perfect. You can increase it or decrease it as required. You can go to manual mode if you want. It's very inefficient. But auto, 21 and a half to 22 degrees generally is right for most people. It's on sync at the moment. But if somebody chooses to go to a different temperature, you just go sync to bring it back in line with each other. You have your general rear demister. You have, oh, sorry, front demister, rear demister, and off. Up here, we have a high-low on the seats. So for the heat, we can uh, have either either seat high or low. Currently, we're in park. As we bring it back, you will notice that the shifter does not line up with the indicated gear. So please keep an eye on the lights as opposed to lining the shifter up with the park reverse neutral drive because otherwise, as you can see, it looks like we're in drive, but we're actually in reverse. Down here, we have our touch screen, touch pad for the stereo system. We can Use it just the same as a mouse pad. As we scroll right, it goes right. As we scroll left, it goes left. If we push down on it, it is enter. Home buttons and back buttons are shaped so we know exactly where they are once we get used to it. Um, very good little system. If you use two fingers, that will control the volume up or down as you swipe it up or down. Handbrake, up is on, down is off. Okay. Auto hold is meant for traffic, so if you're stuck in traffic, you can have auto hold on, and when you stop in the traffic, you take your foot off the brake, it will apply the handbrake until you hit the gas. Um, not such a need in Nelson, but you know, if you lived in heavy cities, then uh, it'd probably work really well. Up the front, echo mode button. So this is to have the vehicle running its most economical. So um, very good in cities, anywhere really. Um, but it will kill the power of the vehicle. It just knocks it down a notch so that it's just running very economical. We have two USB drives in the front directly connected to the Apple CarPlay system, which you can charge anything off or um, connect to the Apple CarPlay. And Apple CarPlay, if you connect a cable to it, will give you your maps on the screen for compatible devices only. Okay. In here, generally our manual will be sitting in the very top shelf of the glove box. Um, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Up here, we have the controls for our stereo and our lights. Sorry, for our sunroof and our lights. So this will control the slide for the front sunroof and the other one will control the actual window itself. Okay, we have no need to open the sunroof inside, so. As we go, and in the back, we have a button for the rear cover. Easy as that. And I'm probably flattening the battery, but anyway. Yeah. Other than that, welcome to your new Mitsubishi Eclipse. Okay, so under the bonnet, this is the one you're going to use the most. Window washer fluid. Not to be confused with coolant. If your coolant is between the top level here and the bottom level down here, you're just right. Engine oil goes in here. Transmission oil check is here, generally left for the professionals. And engine oil check is back here. Okay, other than that, we have a battery, an engine. That's about it. Congratulations on your new Mitsubishi.